Hello everyone, Ryan here. The Essential Aerosmith. This is a uh, pretty much like a greatest hits collection, except it's not called uh, greatest hits. So I listened to this and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do the track listing here. There's a uh, it's a two CD collection, so on disc one, it starts with Mama Kid, uh, number two is Dream On, three is, or I believe not, not Mama Kid, Mama Kin, yeah, all right, I'm trying to read the font here, and it's so Mama Ken, Dream On, uh, and then the same old song and dance, Seasons of Wither, Walk This Way, Big Ten Inch Record, Sweet Emotion, Last Child, Back in the Saddle, Draw the Line, uh, Dude, in parentheses, Looks Like a Lady, 12, Angel, 13, Ragdoll, 14, Jane's Got a Gun, 15 is Lovin' and Elevator, and last track, 16, is titled What It Takes. So, as far as my favorites on the on disc one, uh, I do like Dream On, obviously. I know a lot of people like that Aerosmith song. It's, it's pretty much, I believe it's like their most iconic song. Uh, another one I like is Walk This Way, Sweet Emotion, uh, Dude, Looks Like a Lady, <laughs> Janie's Got a Gun, uh, I think that's pretty much, much it, uh, Big Ten Inch Record, uh, I never heard that song before, but then, you know, I'm not a big, Aero, I'm not a big diehard Aerosmith fan <laughs> to begin with, um, uh, but I was surprised by this, by the lyrical content of this song. I mean, because it's, it's it's humorous. It's like pretty much comedic, and so yeah. I mean, I did I didn't expect. I had no idea that Aerosmith had a song like this. <laughs> um, then of course, like dude, uh, the song dude looks like a lady. The only reason I guess I like that song is because I first heard it in the soundtrack for Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and yeah, I remember, I think I was back in, in the 90s. So yeah, when I was a kid growing up in the 90s and <laughs> that song was played a lot. <laughs> and then, I mean, because it coincided with the release of the movie, Mrs. Doubtfire. So it's nice. So on to disc, uh, disc number two. Starts with uh, the other side, living on the edge, crying, then amazing. Deuces are wild, crazy, falling in love. Uh, pink. I don't want to miss a thing. Jaded. Just push play. Uh, walk this way. This is a, a different version. The version they did with Run DMC, and then Girls of Summer, and the last track, uh, Lay It Down. So on disc, on disc two, my favorites are Living on the Edge, uh, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, uh, Walk This Way, even though this, I mean, the version with Run DMC, but I also like the original version too. Um, and also the other side. Yeah. I know like other songs like uh, Just Push Play or Jaded, <clears throat> Girls of Summer. I never really like those songs because the thing with that is like there's a lot of Aerosmith songs that I don't really like just because I feel like they're a little too, they're way too soft for me. It, it's, <laughs> But, but I mean, I know, you know, they, 
you know, that's a big part of their career is, uh, you know, they became known for, not only for their, like, the songs, their bluesy rock songs, but also their very slow, emotional ballads. And, uh, I guess I, you know, yeah, I, I think it's, it's safe to assume that that's a big part of what made Aerosmith so popular. Because of the fact that it's kind of like majority of the catalog is like 50% or near close to 50% uh, bluesy rock songs. And then another 50% of slow uh, ballad kind of stuff. Even lovey-dovey kind of stuff. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, they they got enough material to, like, satisfy just about anyone, I believe. So, uh, that and then, you know, the fact that their entire career spans multiple generations. So, it's, um I will say, like, uh, Joe Perry, the guitar player, the lead guitarist, uh, I guess he's never really been one of my favorite guitarists, but on some songs, I do like some of the guitar solos that he plays. Uh, I will say, I've never been a fan, I've never been a big fan of, like, the kind of distortion that Joe Perry uses, and... Cause it's got like, I mean, I mean, not, not counting, you know, back when they first started out and they didn't have access to a lot of, uh, current amplifier technology. I'm not even counting that. I mean, but even like in their, the recent stuff that they started to do, like in the nineties, uh, or even like late eighties, nineties, and then early two thousands. It's still like, I never really liked the kind of distortion that he used. And, uh, but again, that's, you know, that's a personal choice for me. Uh, I don't know. I just, cause I feel, I kind of feel like, especially on some songs where he's got some really awesome guitar solos, to me, they don't really like stand out that much. Uh, and I felt like, you know, I just feel like if he had used, some even some slightly different kind of distortion it could have really pushed his lead guitar work out into the forefront and been much more noticeable, much more talked about. Or, I don't know. <laughs> but I know, I, I think, like, usually with Aerosmith songs, it's always, like, Steven Tyler, for the vast majority of their songs, it's always Steven Tyler's vocals that stand out the most. And... Which yeah, that's understandable because I mean he's pretty awesome. Uh, although I'm, I know that now he's uh, obviously not able to hit the exact same high notes that he used to when he was considerably younger. Um, but I mean, obviously, you know, that happens with with age. It happens to a lot of awesome singers. So, but I mean, you know, he he can still sing. So it's. Uh, I never got to see I, I never got to see Aerosmith in concert. Um, I think last time they actually played uh, here where I live in El Paso, Texas. Uh, but I think it was like sometime in the nineties, and I was supposed to go with my parents. I think I was maybe nine or ten years old at the time, and so I was supposed to go with my parents, and then. I think it was, I got the flu or something like that. I got some really bad cold or something. And the only reason I remember it, because I remember it as being like, you know, the, the time when I could have seen Aerosmith in concert, but wasn't able to, cause I, I got sick and I mean, I had a high fever. I couldn't, could barely stand up. And so it's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I think my mom ended up going. 
my dad like stayed home with me or and I don't really remember a lot. It was just I just remember being pretty freaking sick and <laughs> missing out on Aerosmith. It's <clears throat> But yeah, as far as like everything else goes, uh, drumming is decent. Uh, I know that their Aerosmith drummers never been like really too technical. Although I mean, there's little parts here and there when he does kind of really get going, get into it. He gets into it and uh, bass. I I couldn't really notice too many bass tracks. Uh, I I don't know. It's but I, I guess their bass player is pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, pretty much for me, like when it comes to this collection, you know, I would say it's a pretty good collection. You know, it's got it's a nice mix of their more popular stuff uh, and like some, I don't know, like a sprinkling of some of their not so popular stuff. I mean, I don't know. That's 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 what I consider it. Uh, and uh, pretty much most of these are mix and mastered pretty decently. I mean, taking into consideration, you know, back when they first started, and you know, a lot of the recording technology, studio technology, was very sparse. Yeah, I believe that's the correct word. So, I mean, overall, I, I give this collection um, four out of five stars. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's mostly because, like, uh, I would give it five, but I think, I, for me, I kind of feel like this really isn't that much of what, t what the title claims, the essential Aerosmith. <laughs> But then, I don't know. I guess maybe if you if you're a diehard Aerosmith fan, then I didn't, then you would consider it. There's a possibility you might consider it to be the essential Aerosmith. So I don't know, or maybe it's just the essential Aerosmith, according to Aerosmith. <laughs> so yeah, I get four or five stars. That'll do it from our view of this, the essential Aerosmith. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. As always, until next time, don't forget, keep it real, keep on rocking, and peace.